Hi, welcome to Portage County Matters. I'm Patty Dreyer, Portage County Executive. Glad to have you with us. My guest today is Cindy Wasinski. She is our Register of Deeds in the courthouse is where you'll find her office. We're going to talk with Cindy in a few minutes. I'd like to start out with a few news notes. First of all, budget 2014. The big, the big news of the day is we are continuing on the path of in integrating citizen input and county board supervisor input to shape that budget. It is due to be adopted on November 4th. As of the last show, there was uh, a lot of tough choices I had mentioned I had made in this budget. And I am aware as of the taping of the show today on the 24th that we have 12 amendments, at, at least 12 amendments that are in process from the county board members regarding changes they would like to make to this budget. Many citizens have been involved in providing input, and for that we are all grateful, as I know that this is, a, this is a budget, a policy document that will guide us, not only for next year, but starts to lay the foundation for years ahead as well. So it's important that we all achieve the, the um, compromises that we're looking for, the goals that we're looking for out of this budget to the, to the ability of our limited fiscal resources, of course. I want to highlight a couple of things related to the budget presentation that I had made. Last time I didn't provide much detail and I wanted to offer you that for those of you who may not have access to the internet. And uh, I will highlight these items and then I want you to know that if you do have access to the internet and you would like to get a copy of the budget presentation, you can find it at the county's homepage at www.co dot portage dot wi dot us and not only will you be able to find the PowerPoint presentation but you'll be able to watch a video if you would even like to you know zoom through parts of the video of when I presented the budget the other thing that you can find is our new budget book for this 2014 budget as presented in October and it really has a lot more narrative in it so it should make it a lot easier for folks to understand and we hope that you will check out that new book give us some more feedback about how we can continue to improve it going forward this budget has a tax rate of 5.36 it is it, it it translates into $5.36 per 1,000 of home value in Portage County. If you take a median value home in our county of $144,400, the increase over 2013's uh, tax, the taxes then would be less than $16 of an increase in total. And that includes 12 cents increase for the operating levy uh, transfer for our um, unified dispatch that we are now uh, leading, leading with here in Portage County. So it's, uh, it's been a, a, a long time coming, this 40 years of trying for, uh, for um, getting our, our dispatch, our 911 center under one roof, and we have now done that. And that's a 12 cents increase in our taxes. The tax rate for 2013, just for reference, was 5.25. So again, in 2014, my proposal is 5.36. This can still change based on which amendments may be accepted on the floor and then adopted into the budget by the county board. And of course, later in November, there's an opportunity in case I would like to uh, take an action and veto something in that budget, then they'll go back to county board for more action. All right, I want to share with you about how those numbers break down a little bit. And some of you may remember that I had a, a chart I used in the past. This is the chart that represents the three parts of the county budget uh, that are, and the county taxes. And so we have an outside ban is debt service. We have an operating budget, which is what we use to run daily operations in the county. The debt service is all about what we've borrowed, and we pay our, our debt down usually in these days about every three to five years so that Port Portage County doesn't live with a lot of debt. And, and then the center of the target here, I guess you would say, is our EMS uh, levy, and this is for our countywide EMS system. So when you pay your taxes, you pay sort of a slice across each of these three bands of the target. And this then makes up your whole county tax bill, and that then is part of a five-part tax bill that includes your own municipality, whether you live in the city or a township or a village. 
It includes the Mid-State Technical College and the school district and the university. And so when you put all of these things together, that's what makes up your full tax bill. So for Portage County's taxes in 2014, what we have then, when I said we had a tax rate of 5.36, 46 cents of that is debt levy, paying off our debt. We're, we're due to pay it down within the next uh, year or so, less than a year. So we'll already be looking at our next borrowing package because we like to keep debt steady so you don't have a spike in your taxes over time as we make infrastructure improvements. An operating levy is our biggest part. That's $4.66 per thousand of equalized value in the county. And then EMS levy is 0.24, or almost a quarter. And uh, anyway, I thought that that perspective could help you understand when you get your tax bill, what are, what are all the contributors uh, to, that, to that bill. A couple other things I wanted to point out about the budget. I focused on performance, accountability, and transparency, things I've been working on all along uh, this three and a half years or so in office. Our equalized value in the county went up. We have a 1.30 uh, increase in um, the percentage on equalized value in our county. In the last two years, it was negative, so we're really going in the right direction. And our net new growth is 1.24%, and again, shows that we're going in the right direction. I wanted to show you that your, here's how your, I know it's a, let's see if we can see it on the screen. I think we can. Um, there's a general trend line I want to show you, the trend line that um, rises and then levels off. This is the picture of the equalized value and tax levy over the last 15 years. So when we reach the time in 2010 when I came into office, what we have is a leveling off, but it was for a lot of reasons. It, there were lots of things happening in our state politics. There were lots of things happening related to what the Great Recession had done to our community as we had continued to deal with that. But anyway, you can see that we have, um, we have leveled off and kept very steady our tax rate in the county. And uh, I just thought that that picture would be a, a good one to share with you. Our budget in 2014, as I presented it, again, this can change a little bit based on how the amendments are integrated from the county board floor. It, it, our, our, our operating levy, that middle band on the target I showed you, is about $22.3 million of operating costs. So that's what it takes to run your county government for a year. Um, I should say $22.4 million to round it up. Okay, the debt levy is about $2.2 million, and the EMS levy is $1.1 million. So again, it just kind of gives you a dollar figure so that it makes the total just shy of $110 million, and the tax levy total then is less than $26 million. It's $25.7 million in looking at the figures here. The, the county budget as a whole for 2014 is a decrease of 1% from last year when it's all said and done. And when we put all of this together, our tax levy total of $25.7 million includes almost $600,000 on that levy transfer for the unified dispatch. And it applies 60% of the unused levy from 2013 to put to two, two causes. One, for our deferred prosecution program, that's $20,000. It's a program that we run out of our DA's office. It's run by Justice Works in our community. And the judges order offenders into that program to help them uh, be held accountable for certain uh, conditions of their, of, their court, um, of their court actions, I guess you would say. The other thing that we are covering with the additional levy from 2013 is $96,500 for our enhanced 911 infrastructure costs. And I think I talked about that at the beginning of the last show, so I won't go through that again. Anyway, there are three different areas that are getting the most discussion on county budget for the dialogue that's happening to date. 
One is related to the town of Grant and $16,000 of a line item that is put in this budget for ambulance services that we are not providing from our metro ambulance system to their township. They are being served by a an ambulance service that's only a couple of minutes from their town, but it is over in Wood County and not in Portage County as part of our countywide system. So we're not running our fuel, um, our, our ambulances down there, except in the case of a, if you needed more than one ambulance and they call for mutual aid. But otherwise, you know, we're we are avoiding some extra costs and uh, I felt it was an appropriate thing to put in this budget going forward. Another item that has been discussed a lot is Healthy Beginnings. You'll hear conversation about that prevention program. It's been going on for 16 years. The county budget last year had $140,000 for Healthy Beginnings in our non-county agency part of the budget because this isn't part of a, an ongoing county core mission of a county department. This is a program that arose from citizen interest and, and research in years gone by where um, they based an, the model on, on evidence and research and, and now take parent educators who go into the homes of families with certain risk factors and those families volunteer to participate in the program. There were 76 p families that were involved in the program and sometimes they're involved for multiple years, even four, four or more years in the program and it focuses on health, safety, nutrition and the development of children. It's a program that has done great things for families in our community. But the challenge before me when I was putting this budget together is that our that our funds are limited. We have, um, we can't do everything that we that we would like to do in any area of our mission. And so, in looking at all the choices and our rising cases of child abuse and neglect uh, in Portage County, in fact, I believe there's. Um, uh, there's a chart in the budget presentation that you can see online that that shows you the trending upward in child abuse and neglect uh, cases <clears throat> that we investigate and then follow through on the legitimate cases. And anyway, when you put all of that together, my thought is, and the thought of my um, uh, staff members over in Health and Human Services is that we may be able to do something to improve the integration of the Healthy Beginnings program with our Health and Human Services program. It'll take a little retooling of the Healthy Beginnings program, but we also believe we can have some great values at less cost to Portage County taxpayers up front. Instead of 140000 I put $100,000 in the budget, and I put it in the Health and Human Services budget in order to address specifically the child abuse and neglect and foster care costs you know that we're all dealing with when we've got to help families get on a better track and have self safe places for children to grow up and uh, I'm very unfortunately we've got 90 children plus located outside of their own homes right now because their homes aren't good homes for them to be living in at this time so we've got to address those problems and this is one of the ways to try to stretch tax dollars to be able to do that so I'm looking forward to working through the finals on how that comes out and how we can, uh, uh, you know, make these these programs work toward a common cause, and that is uh, preventing child abuse and neglect. And then finally, volunteers and probation has gotten a lot of conversation as well. This is a program that has primarily served low-risk offenders who volunteer to be mentored by trained community volunteers. Again, this program is offered through Justice Works. And uh, we provided last year in the 2013 budget one-time funds of $50,000 to continue to bridge, build a bridge to the future for the volunteer and probation program. There are great things happening when we can mentor a, a young offender who has um, been in trouble with the law and we help them be nurtured in, in appropriate ways to get back on their feet, get on a strong path and stay there. And um, it's one more time back to limited resources and the reason I made this decision was that we need to keep our county mission whole and the best I could do was to um, come up with 
a support for, for this kind of mentoring program through our Wisconsin Department of Corrections model. It's a five-year model project for the state of Wisconsin that's centered out of our halfway house, our portage house. It deals with medium to high-risk offenders. Those are the folks that more frequently come through and cycle through the jail. And what we're looking at is $62,000 a year, not $50,000, 62 plus thousand dollars a year for Justice Works for that mentoring program. So then I eliminated the $50,000 over in another place in the budget that was with one-time funds anyway. I know that the populations are slightly different. I know that the volunteers use the low-risk offenders to build their confidence in their training before they're able to um, be able to work with higher-risk offenders, but I just don't think the county levy is the place to support financially all of these endeavors. I think uh, we need to have some partnerships to make that happen, partnerships in the community. And so I'm hoping that we will come to the best resolution of all for that, that program to continue, even though I, I didn't find $50,000 in the county levy for us to support uh, future funding for that program. And the final note I'd like to leave you with is not a budget note, but just a different bit of news. Our new highway commissioner, Nathan Check, has started with us in October, middle of October, and we were off to a wonderful beginning. He was uh, at a municipal meeting last night. I've already gotten feedback around the county about how much folks are enjoying working with him and the assets that he brings to the position. He hails from the town of Sharon originally, but he has come to us from the city of Mequon, where he was the director of public works and the engineer there for the city. So welcome, Nathan, and um, I look forward to your feedback as we continue to help us uh, continue to have some of the best roads in the county, especially as we look at snow season, get ready for those snow plows to come out and know that our roads are often in better condition for winter driving safety than some others. And I'm just really proud of the work that our, our highway crew does. So anyway, the, I'll leave all the business uh, behind us now and let's turn to our guest of the day. Cindy, welcome, welcome. Morning, thank you. <laughs> Cindy Wasinski, a, a Register of Deeds. Now, you've been in the position for how long, Cindy? I began with Portage County in September of 1987. Um, and I've always worked in the Register of Deeds Land Description Office. However, I wasn't elected until 1997. So I've been with the county for 27 years. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, wow. it's, time flew. So wow. it's been a wonderful ride, and I enjoy the people I work with and the customers that come into the office very and much. And we can tell that. Yeah, we definitely can tell that. So. Let's just a little bit about you, if we could. So um, what led you to, to come up through and actually run for that office then? Um, I worked for a title company before I came to Portage County, and I worked a lot with their tract index, um, building their tract and working with legal descriptions and legal documents. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect fit for the land description department at that time in um, 1987. So there was an open uh, position in that department, and I, was, I applied for it and was hired and stayed there ever since and just moved up through the ranks. Awesome, awesome. Now, how large is the staff? I want, you to, I want everybody to know, and also talk a little about where you're located so they get, get an orientation here. Sure. We're located in the Portage County um, Courthouse. We're right on the first floor off of the Arlington um, entrance, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is right across from the Century parking lot. There are, besides myself, there are four other staff members. We do have two open positions right now, one which is currently being um, uh, held by an LTE in the office, a limited term employee. Mm -hmm. um, however, we're going through a reorg and once that reorganization is done, we'll be hiring those to fill those two positions permanently. Um, also located in the department is our county surveyor who works on a part-time basis. His office hours are just four hours a week in the office on Friday mornings. Good old Joe. So, yep, Joe Lasky, yep. <laughs> uh, now, uh, tell us more about the mission. You know, when people think about deeds, you know, we're thinking about land, we're thinking about, um, uh, I think some folks don't think about some of the certificates and things like our birth certificates and death certificates and so on and so forth that are also housed officially through your department too, right? Right, they are. Mm -hmm. um, our mission is to preserve and make, have access to the public, the property records and the vital records for Portage County. Um, so we have property records range all the way back to the 1800s, well, probably middle 1800s that you can find property records. Um, and vital records too, some of them go as far back as the 1850s. So not all those vital records are back to the 1850s, but there, we have some. Um, so yeah, that is really our main mission is to pr 
preserve and protect those records and make available to the public whenever possible. Now, I remember when, <clears throat> excuse me, when you took me into the, the storage area mm -hmm. and where you have all the really old records. Yes. In these tr tremendously uh, awesome books. Yes. And uh, so how often does somebody even ask you to look at really old records in the Quite county? often. We're finding that a lot more people are doing um, genealogy and research. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find in these old records that you refer to, um, they're big, big books that yeah, are usually yeah. Yeah, 11 by 17, um, weigh probably about 25, 30 pounds. And a lot of those documents are handwritten. So somebody actually back in the day hand wrote all those documents in. So yeah, we're finding that a lot more people are re um, are referring to those documents. Um, what we have They're just so completed, they are very interesting. Um, what we just completed was a big scanning project where hopefully by middle of next year, we'll be able to offer those records online for people to look at. And that will not only oh, yeah. offer um, ease and access to the documents, mm -hmm. but also to um, protect the records itself, the original record. Wow. So. Let's talk about some of the business side of what you do, all right? Before we get to what's the personal side for the homeowner out there who is listening to us today, for example, talk business. So you have revenue streams. You actually make some money through the revenues brought in through your office. What are some of the ways that people, people contribute to the revenue stream that makes your department sustainable? Sure. Um, well, we, ret we make our money through um, recording of documents. That's where we make the largest chunk of our money. Um, not all that money stays in our department, but however, we are able to offset most of our um, expenses through that money. Um, so recordings, transfer fees, eight, the Department of Revenue keeps 80% of those transfer fees. Um, vital records, the majority of that money goes to the state. However, we do keep a small portion. Photocopies, um, we work with the Department of Commerce for weatherization, um, so we're able to certify uh, rental units for county residents, um, things of that nature. So we do bring in quite a bit of money, and as you had mentioned, um, we are sustainable. We do typically bring in enough money to sustain our office and return a little bit back to the general fund. In the past economic times, we haven't always been that right. case, but that is far and few between. Mm -hmm. And more and more citizens have access online, on the web, for services. So we want to make sure that you get a chance to mention where do people go for, for access to, Cindy? Yes, if you want to search um, records, most of our records are online. And like I said, we just completed this large project. And hopefully by the summer of next year, we'll even have double what we have um, out there. But if you want to access any of the records online, you just mm -hmm. go to www.co.portage.wi.us, right to the county website and then go to our department, register of deeds, and there will be links. Sure. Or um, online records right on the top. There will be tabs listed, online records, and there will be a drop down, and you just select hmm. um, our office records. So uh, I'm going to skip to some questions. I mean, you brought along something about protecting investments and um, some advice that you would like to offer to people who are purchasing property. I do. Let's get to that. Yes. We, um, I had, in the past, I've had requests from constituents that had asked about, is there any way to be notified about um, records that are recorded against my property. We never, we didn't have an avenue to provide that to the mm -hmm. consumer. Um, however, um, with some new land records um, uh, programming that we just purchased this past year, we are now able to offer that. And I have a little poster here that shows, um, talks about it a little bit. It's pro uh, called um, Pro Protect Investment Property Fraud Alert. Um, so if you go to www.propertyfraudalert.com, um, you can register to sign up for um, this program. And what it will do is it will alert you if there, something is recorded in the name that you register, and you're allowed to register four different names under one email address, it will alert you to that recording of that document. In other words, if somebody was trying to fraudulently um, make some change to your land yep. or, or, or your deed or something? Yep, or took out a loan in your name, oh, something to that effect. 
this program would you would alert you to that effect? Well, it's, uh, okay, so www.propertyfraudalert.com. Maybe we can put that on the bottom of the screen for folks too. So there's one one extra benefit right. of connecting with your Register of Deeds office for sure. Right, and anybody who records a document in our office, as long as they are a private owner, not a company like a mortgage company, we do re return a little pamphlet to them talking about the same program that allows them to also access it. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's talk about other services that you offer to benefit folks out there and what your role is in the tax process too. Sure. Um, in the tax process, I guess uh, the biggest point I'd like to make is that um, we prepare all the tax bills, or not the tax bills, but the information that goes on a tax bill. So property owner, mailing address, legal description, um, acreage, assessed value, which is given to us by the assessor. We put that, all that information into the tax bill. Um, um, I guess what we would like to tell people or the information we'd like to get out to everybody is that at tax time, um, if you sold property or purchased property after January 1st of the year, mm -hmm. perhaps it wasn't the whole parcel or you had something surveyed, at the end of the year, the tax bill is going to go to the person who held the tax bill January 1st. Whenever there is a change made to the legal description or the acreage of a property, that change cannot be made until January 1st of the following year. So it's important to keep that in mind. And if that, if that is your situation, mm -hmm. what, they, what the property owner needs to do is either go back to the closing agent to see if they prorated taxes correctly for that year, for, the, for instance, 2013, the current year, or if they hadn't, they should go back to the closing agent and ask them, you know, what did you do with this tax? You, prorate, you should have prorated it. You know, I didn't purchase the whole piece of land. You know, how can you help me out? Excellent, and I love it when we're able to offer folks who are, who are listening some of the extra tips about how to help them in their own lives, for sure. And of course, if you mm -hmm. ever, ever have any questions, you're always more than welcome to call our office, step down to see us. You know, we're always more than help, happy to help you out. Mm -hmm. I know we have a couple minutes left in the show, and so let's talk about vital records a little bit. You know, how do I get one? How do you protect my identity? You know, if you've got records like my birth certificate sure, or something like that. Sure. Um, a few years back, well, it's probably about seven years now, the state of Wisconsin changed their vital record paper. It wasn't, it's not on plain paper anymore, and it's on a tricolored paper. It's pink, um, blue, and white, and it's, it, there's also other securities built into the paper. So you want to make sure, first of all, that if you have a vital record, a certified copy of a vital record, it's on that type of paper. Um, and if you don't, if you have one on the old copy, I'd like to also extend the offer to citizens that if you bring that certified copy in, as long as it was purchased through our office, we will exchange that uh, on the more. current vital record ah, uh, paper for free. All right. So well, that is a nice service that we offer customers. But we also want to make sure that you don't photocopy your vital record. It's against the law. It's a felony. And if you ever have any questions about that, please don't share your vital record or let anybody keep it or make photocopies of it. They can, custom, or, uh, criminals can use that to steal your identity. And we're not just talking about birth certificates, we're talking about marriage and death records as well. So if someone has a question, I know as we close, close the show here, if they have a question, if they want to know about how to get a map of their property, if they want to know about the PROTECT program, they want to know about how to protect their identity through the deeds process, they can call your office and we'll put the, or stop in. Correct, yeah. And, and they'll definitely get a lot of help. I know that's something that you and your staff do every time. So thank you so much to you and your team of folks in the Register of Deeds. You do such important work for all of us and keep, keep, uh, keep our history rolling forward, don't you? Yes, we do. And thank you for inviting me, Patty. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Cindy. Our next guest will be uh, some citizen guests talking about snowmaking project that they're raising funds for here in Portage County for Standing Rocks County Park. So that should be an interesting winter show. I'll see you then. Thank you.